for those just starting out, to those who built their reputation. In the detail industry, navigating the course is a daily grind. This is Play by Play with industry professionals tackling topics and offering tips to help improve your game plan. Now, here's your Play by Play. What's hey. up? Another <laughs> fine episode of Play by Play. Here we are. Of course, I'm Dustin Jackson with my buddy Ryan. How's it going, man? Thank God it's Friday. Thank God. TGIF. And man, you know that new intro never gets old. I, like I love it, that. Man. Love the detail, Billy. How it, how, it, how it fades out. I mean, that's just so cool. Um, if you guys missed his live, y'all should definitely go like uh, Hacker and Pro Detail. You oh, yeah. The, yeah, he uh, just took like, what, seven pies in the face or yeah, something? Yeah, it was, it was beautiful, man. On a Friday, seven pies. It was a uh, good it day was for great. him. It was great. Yeah, and all the guys, all the detailers were out there just smashing him in the face so um really cool yeah if those of you don't know it's akron detail akron pro detail, akron pro detail. Akron, uh, hi, our buddies right. out there and uh, go check out the video it's hilarious but want to talk about uh what back. you've been doing all yeah. week long <laughs> yeah, I've been burning up man yeah i've been dying it's so nice to be in this air-conditioned room uh we're set up down at a fishing radio in dolphin island uh and we'll get into why we're there in a little a little bit later but just know it's hot as hell down there, and uh, it's so nice to come in here and get this break. I, you know, chat it up with you, Ryan. I enjoy every Friday, man. I get a I get a little bit of a time with you, yeah. and, uh, away from the the computer, the screen. hustle and bustle. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, and it, and it is nice. I mean, we get to come up here and kind of catch up and talk to each other, and uh, you know, we're blowing and going all day long. And uh, and it's funny. Somebody asked me the other day, um, who was it? It's one of my friends and. And and they're oh oh it was John and his wife works here. Okay. She's like, and he's like man I know y'all talk to each other all day you know and I'm like no dude we, we we're in passing you yep. know so um and that's kind of the way they are with with you so it's nice to come up here and and, and take the break and enjoy it for absolutely a minute, so. man and I know I'm, you're happy to get out that sun so man it's so hot down there it's brutal it's brutal but you know um tell us who's coming on today right man so we were actually talking uh, this week we've been talking about that dip in your revenue right yeah. so during the uh, we got um, a special guest coming on today that yeah. I think, you know, could certainly help you in that instance. Absolutely. Um, yeah, he's a businessman for sure. That's right. And uh, y'all will remember Joe LaPalm. Uh, yep. He was actually on one of our podcasts before down at SDC. Did we? Did we do a podcast at SDC? I mean, there's evidence on YouTube, but oh, at the party, the yeah, party yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, a, I have heard about that. I don't right, I don't really remember it, but I heard about it. So right, but, so IGL opened a training facility down in Lexington, uh, Lexington, Kentucky. Yeah, and, man, that's uh, a and that's a beautiful place. They really got it going on there, and that was a fun party. I mean, we make jokes about not. I do remember most of it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was a good time. It was a really good time. We had a lot of fun, um, you know, but. Uh, I would love to go back to their training facility. Also, I want to give a shout out to Ryan St. Clair and then also Brett Berry. We um so we kind of made a little milestone in Easy In history. We this isn't our first plane to detail, but this is our first per our insurance company, our first plane to detail. <laughs> and um and so both of those guys gave me some good tips. I mean, they're both absolutely professionals in the industry and and uh and we just did a Falcon two thousand. We we're That's polishing awesome. the uh, let me make sure I get this right. The leading edge of the wings and then the inlets. I was corrected by Ryan earlier. Uh, the inlets on the engines. And, you know, I'm like, I, I don't know. We detail boats and cars, dude. If right. it's not a tire, I don't know what it is. Anyways, <clears throat> but those guys helped me, man. They really came to uh, came to help. I had a few questions, mm -hmm. and uh, they jumped in there and, and helped me. And so crews down there in the hangar. That's where I've been all morning. And uh, they've been in the hangar detailing this plane, and it's absolutely beautiful. That's awesome, man. And detailers are like that, at least. You know, I'm really seeing a movement in the groups on Facebook. Detailing for Money is having a big shift. Um, for all you detailers out there, I mean, if you've mm -hmm. been paying attention, that group is trying to professionalize the industry. They're doing the same thing that, you know, we hope to do through our work and through yeah. software and well, the podcast. There, I mean, there's so much value in not degrading and, like, punishing each other for asking questions, but actually helping. And that's one that's thing right. if you guys are in our um, MVP group, if you're, a, uh, you know, a current user of the software, you're in our MVP group. And we want to add value to your life. We don't want to take away. We don't want to be, you know, we don't want to be the guys that, that take away from you we want to add to and detail for money is making a shift and i'm and i'm proud of those guys for stepping up and getting control of that group because really it just became i mean i hate to say this it just became kind of one of those things that you just kind of dreaded to see because these guys were just ripping each other apart. it's a troll group is what it ended up yeah. kind of becoming so, yeah but uh, i think they're fixing that and uh kudos to them for for stepping in and taking control what happened to billy bogus I, I saw he's in facebook jail for three days Have oh you seen i didn't that? see you guys put in jail oh. i mean i've been watching his live <laughs> 
No, very entertaining. No, something happened yesterday. I didn't quite catch it. Maybe he'll he, – if well, I don't know if he can watch this or not. <laughs> Anyways, uh, if you can't watch it. It'll be on YouTube, yeah. Billy. <laughs> yeah, so uh, – but now something happened. Uh, I'll have to call him and find out. Yeah, uh, but I saw where he got – so anyways – um, enough of our rambling. We do have some, we do <laughs> we have a point a to this guess. show. Right. Yeah, we got Joel upon, but but we talked about the Dolphin Island Fishing Rodeo. Right, that's where I've been all week, and we've been setting up our retail store. And a lot of detailers out there don't know. A lot of our guests don't know that I own a retail store as well. And uh, so we look for um, trade shows and things to do, boat shows or fishing rodeos, things that we can go do and set up our store, and that maximizes our exposure to the public so you know it just increases how many people see us of course it increases sales right um and it's just a, another opportunity to generate revenue outside of detailing and you guys know how to do it too i mean that thing looked amazing it looked like <laughs> literally a storefront yeah i mean you know we take a, yeah we take our whole store i mean as we have six thousand square feet of retail space this is a little showroom this is a real retail store and we take every bit of it out and when i say we i mean we got a team yeah you know, and we go set it up down there, and it's, uh, I mean, they, they, those girls are killing it. But it's hot. Like I said before, it's hot down there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's uh, it's fun to do, and it does. It, it's, you know, it's another revenue source where you can help, you know, float those slow times. And that's what, yeah, I kind of jumped the gun earlier. But basically, we were talking this week about what do you do to extend that slow, you know, to, yeah. to extend your season. The busy season and, and, and then continue to generate that revenue. That's right. And uh, some of our guys on our software, they do things like, you know, they've got a uh, uh, Robert Delta Bay. He sells like, you know, he's got a cool uh, collection of Hot Wheels, but he also, he's not afraid to part with them if the price is right. They're right. Just, you know, he's uh, not out there with, you know, sitting at the register waiting, but, you know, he, he uses those um, to generate people coming coming in this store it's a story behind the oh, you yeah. know behind the shop uh, it definitely fits their vibe it's you know? an experience going I, in there you know i really learned is. the other day that he was uh used to work at a comic book store and it totally all came together <laughs> yeah, at that absolutely. point i'm like yeah that makes a lot of sense definitely man so you know just doing something like you do with your retail store yeah you know any any way to kind of get that revenue going and continuing you know so you don't have such a down season i think yeah. that's extremely important you know and and listen there's other you know there's other ways to scale your business i mean we own a storage facility i own a storage facility and the retail store, um, and then also a marketing company. Let's go shout out to the software company. Oh yeah, the software company. So, anyways, lots of <laughs> lots of uh, you know opportunities there. But you know, I chose that path, and I was telling you this earlier. I chose that path because I wanted to build a team that we could do some special stuff. Right. And I know that I knew that it was going to be really hard to build the size team that we built just with the detailing. And I'm not going to say it can't be done, but I'm, you know, for me, what made more sense was to kind of get my hands in some other things. Sure. And then that allowed me to add to our team. And so when we go to do something, we, we show up and show out. And they kind know? of noticed that too, didn't they, down at the rodeo? Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. So we like, we have, t you know, taken the spotlight down there. Um, you know, we got, a, I mean, we have four times the size booth than anybody down there. And, you know, I literally our whole store is there, and, and it's all the kind of cool stuff after go shorts and you yeah, know yeah, the, the it's, shirts. It's outdoor and apparel. I mean, it's right. the guys that these are. It's a fishing rodeo, and if, for those of you that don't know what a fishing rodeo is, it's a big fishing tournament. It's offshore and inshore. Like these are big fish. I mean, they literally have a crane that picks the fish up out of the boat <laughs> and weighs it. I'm not kidding. You. That's, and that's how big these fish are, and they people thousands and thousands of people come to the island to watch this go on, mm -hmm. watch these boats come in. Well, at that area, that you know, there at the little hub where everybody comes is our retail store. Right. And then they have concerts every night. Uh, last night they had the Liars Contest. No, oh, I didn't hear about that. Yeah, so, uh, so did, okay, the funny story real quick, and uh, I want to get Joel Palm on here. But the, li but the Liars Contest is them, uh, it's, these guys get on stage and tell the biggest lie they can, and whoever tells the best lie okay. wins the contest. It's <laughs> nice. a fish story, you know. Uh, I got you. That you makes know? sense. But you know how when you catch a fish and, you, and you're like, you're, oh, they yeah. exaggerate. That's, that's the whole point behind the thing. It's like the most exaggerated story that someone could come up with. That's and, pretty neat. Yeah, it's pretty funny, but. Anyways, you know, so uh, the, the whole the whole um, idea behind this conversation was to show detailers out there that, you know, are, are facing a slow time or when it does come down, you know, come to that point mm -hmm. that there's other opportunities and you can't be scared to take them or you can't be scared to take that risk, especially right. if you're a true entrepreneur at heart. Like, you know, when that opportunity, you know, presents itself, you got to you got to jump on it. 
Now, you do have to, I mean, it, it's a non-quit persistence mentality that will get you through it because it's not like you just flip the switch and, you know, money starts pouring in. Right. You know, you got to be. a lot of investment of time and energy. Yeah, and, time and energy and every, every everything. Right. And so, you know, you got to be willing to put it in and sacrifice it. And it's an everyday thing. It's 24-7. And, uh, but those things pay off in the end. And, uh, you know, honestly, I don't think that, you know, my life would be the same without, you know, I don't think I could wake up each and every day and not have that kind of demand for me. But um, anyways, you're a certain special kind of person, man. I I, I just try to be like you every day. Come on. Don't, you don't want to do that to yourself. (laughs) All right. Listen, uh, we're talking a lot about business. I know one man that for sure knows a ton uh, is Mr. Joel LaPalm. You want to go ahead and bring him on? Yeah, man. Let's bring on Joel. All right. Hey, hey, what's going on, Joel? What's up, Mr. Joel? Hey, hey guys. How are you? Doing good, doing good. Good to see you again. Looks like you're uh, in your car. What you doing, riding around, hanging out today, or what? No, just had some errands to run, and uh, and uh, oops happened this morning, but now we're back. Uh, we're back, so now we're parked, and we're just relaxing. Oh, awesome. Man, that's awesome. Is that a jacket you have on, sir? I forget, you know, you guys are... No, uh, no, no, God, no. no oh, sure. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, it's, it's super hot down here. That's why he was asking. I don't know. what What's the temperature like up there? Right now, 29 degrees. Oh what? God. So you should have a jacket. If it was Alabama, we would all... Is that all... Fahrenheit? No, 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 no. Hang on, hang on. Sorry, sorry. Celsius. <laughs> yeah, I was like, there's no way. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh yeah well it's not 29 Celsius or so, Fahrenheit here yeah, yeah. <laughs> not at all uh, yeah, it's hot no. but uh anyways man we're glad to have you on we just want to chat it up with you we were talking a little bit about business and opportunities and you know um of course I own a retail store and we're we're down on Dolphin Island which is an an island down here that they put on a big fishing radio and we take our retail store and we set it nice. up down there. And so we're just talking about different opportunities. I know you've had your hands in quite a few businesses, right? Yeah, yeah. I was in the retail industry for 27 years. Wow, no kidding. So what uh, what brought you into the yeah. ceramic industry? Uh, well, when I retired from the food industry, I, uh, I basically did that. I semi-retired, and uh, my wife got tired of looking at me every day <laughs> and told me to go find something to do. Oh, Lord. So That's I awful. bought a detail shop in our local town. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had an elderly lady come in and ask me if I could ceramic coat her vehicle. That was six years ago, five and a half, six years ago. And I didn't right. know what ceramic coatings were. So I right. do like everybody else does. I Googled it. Right. <laughs> and uh, a certain a certain company came up and I reached out to them. And uh, they basically told me they weren't interested in yep. me uh, using their product or whatever. And <laughs> I was never used to anybody telling me no in life, so <laughs> I, I, I did a little bit more research, and uh, and now I'm a little bit bigger than that company that told me no. Oh uh, yeah, and you're and you're a lot cooler, man. Too, yeah, I can promise you that. It's funny you said that. Uh, you don't you don't like people telling you no. Uh, you can't see our production manager, but Jessica's right off screen, and she's pointing to me the whole time. She's like, "That's you. That's you." Yeah, and I'm like, because no if you tell me I can't do something, it's like an immediate we're going to do that. Like that's, that's where we're going and it, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's like the budget just went out the window. Let's do whatever oh, it, we got to do to make this shit happen. We gotta it doesn't matter. Out. It doesn't matter what it costs, what it takes. We're going to do it. And, and it comes out of passion too. And your passion is yeah. business. So anything in that, in that realm, you're, you're yeah. jumping on it. Yeah. I'm extremely passionate yeah. and, and it yeah. takes a lot. Joel knows. I mean, he's been in business a long time. And I know. I want to hear about the uh, corn. Is it the Cornwell Comets? Is that how you say that? Corn. Cornwell comments. Oh, God. <laughs> I, I, hey, listen, I figured if anybody yeah. had a Wikipedia page, yeah. it would the palm, so I started, we, you We've know, been doing, doing our homework yeah. over here. <laughs> <laughs> I, listen, I didn't even know I had a Wikipedia page until <laughs> well, somebody told me one day. Hey, hey, go That's check great. it out. <laughs> You're That's definitely great. in there, man. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta tell you, it's pretty bad when your Wikipedia page talks about how you used to beat people up for a living. Oh, no. <laughs> That's what is awesome. the Cornwall comment? I'm serious. What is that? That's a hockey team. Tell, uh, you, you do the thing. So, you do so, so I'll tell you a story. So the year that the NHL went on strike, 
Uh-huh. Um, I saw a business opportunity because Canadians love hockey. Oh, yeah. So the year the NHL went on strike, a couple of buddies of our of mine and I, we got together. We bought a senior hockey team. You ever <laughs> oh, see the movie awesome. Slapshot? Yes. <laughs> so we bought a team that was sort of like in that type of league. Sure. So we guaranteed five fights a game, or everybody oh, would get in free the next No, you're game. kidding wow. me. That is amazing. <laughs> we, had, we, had, we, had, we, had, we had ladies in the arena selling beer and bikinis. Oh, that's what I'm talking <laughs> about. That is what I'm talking about. It was about 2004, I think, is whenever that and, happened. Yeah, and, uh, and in five years, our team won three championships. Unheard of. Nice. Yep. And, uh, and again, I, I have a bit of history with that type of uh, hockey because I played that type of hockey, and yeah. that's what I did. So, uh, you know, if you touch the puck, you get your paid deducted if you're that guy. <laughs> and if what? you're you the guy to score the goals, we'll score the goals. But if you're not there to score the goals... You're there to fight three times a game. You better be ready to fight be three ready times to a fight, game. Huh? Man, that's a different culture. Than so what yeah, we're I'm just curious. Do, do hockey guys train to fight? Like, does that, I mean, do they actually try, or is this just like a brutal? I mean, well, brutal I, I don't think it's a question of training to fight. I think it's a question. It's either in you or it's not. Ah, and gotcha. uh, and uh, I don't want to say I had anger issues when I was a child. I didn't. But uh, <laughs> you know what? I, I'm French Canadian, and if I ever get mad, I. I it's it's not a good thing. I see black, and uh, you know it's almost like you got to pull me off or whatever. Listen, yeah. I broke my nose seven times in my life. I uh, oh, my knuckles goodness. are all gone, both yeah. hands. Uh, you know, it, it's yeah. it's not a matter of how many times you hit a guy. It's how it's how that's hard you hit a guy. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and when they grab a hold to you by your jersey, I mean that's the move. It's a grab that's and the, the, just it's a an over pull. Yeah. You can yeah. you can yeah. you, you can swing around pretty quick on the ice, right? You're swinging around and <laughs> right. you're whatever. But yeah, you know what? It's a listen. Uh, by any means, uh, you're you're not going to win them all. You're going to lose a lot. And sure. uh, the thing is, is you got to be man enough to come back out and do it again. Exactly. exactly. And I think that really ties into what we were talking about, diversifying your income. You know, like it you does. saw an opportunity you and you took it. I mean, that's that that is yeah. one of those things that separates, you know, your kind from the rest of them. Yeah. Dustin included. I mean, you guys take that shot and uh, that's awesome. Yeah. And it's that relentless. Well, taking a risk in life is, is 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 different. I don't necessarily call it taking a risk. I call it taking a calculated decision. Sure. You know, I, I'm not I'm not an idiot either where I'm just going to open the door and drive down the highway and throw money out the window. Right. But I'm going to make sure that uh, when I see that opportunity and I think that I can make something of it because I can do it a certain way that maybe nobody else is thinking. That's right. I'm definitely going to do it because it, it's it's I always call it grabbing the low hanging fruit, mm -hmm. you know. Right, absolutely. Yeah, you know, and that, that's right. And you got to set yourself up for that, you know, to be in that position to do that as well. You can't go through life with blinders on or that tunnel vision and says, okay. And and I talk about these guys that are detailing that, you know, that that have no intentions on running their business and they just kind of feel like they're going to hang on a polisher the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. And like when I started my detail business, I knew, you know, first and <clears throat> foremost, this is I was not going to be polishing cars or polishing boats. The rest of my life that was not going to happen i had no intentions on it. i wanted to start i started that way yeah. but i wanted to build the business and so i started to you know you know develop a process that i could then train other people to do and then put those people in that position so i could move up and focus on other things and and so forth and so on all the way till you get to the point where you're kind of hands off and just running the business which is what i enjoy doing and that's um, what a lot of guys i know want to get to that spot they so. do you they know. do, and you know, it's just you got to. They do, some... but the problem is, is they're not willing to relinquish. Right, and That's the right. biggest thing is, is, and I always try to teach people, and and explain to people. They always say, "Well, how do you, how do you have what you have, or how did you get to where you got?" Mm -hmm. And it's it's not by doing it all the time. You got to let somebody else do yep. it. You got to be there to see the big picture. Mm -hmm. So if you're too busy working in your business. Yes. Nobody is working on building your business. That's right. Absolutely. That's right. And, and you know, and you I know always, what I mean? I That's always tell thing. them if, you, if you're the only one that can do that thing in your business, you will be the only person that does that thing as long as your business exists. So if you can't say, if you say, well, I'm the only person that can say in this kind of whatever, or I'm the only person that can do polish a black, whatever. That, well, guess what? That's, you have set yourself up for to be the only person that's going to do that as that's long right. as that company exists. 
you, you should be able to teach anybody how to do anything that you know how to do. And if you can't teach them, you don't know it well enough yourself. And you can't be the Instagram, you know. Yeah, one of the things, one of the things that we're happy about at IGL and, and our family and everything is that our, our focus is to try to help our detailers grow their businesses. Right. Try to take somebody from maybe a fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a year to a quarter of a million. That's you right. know, and, 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 and the only way that we're going to do that is by teaching them business skills. And like you said, if you're the only guy that can do the black polishing or this or that, and because in your head, you're already, you've already made that decision. That's right. You're not going to be the guy running the business. You're not going to be the business person. You're going to be the hands-on person. You've already made that call. Yep. So since you've made that call, Get somebody in there to manage your business for you. Absolutely. Get your wife. Maybe she's the person that's going to be the forefront or the person that's going to do all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But you've got to have that person. Otherwise, what's going to happen, and I see it every day, and it frustrates me so much. I, I'm happy when I talk to our IGL guys and they tell me they're booked out till the end of August, September. Uh -huh. But then you talk to new people that come on board and, so how's business? Oh, it's good. I'm booked out till next Tuesday. So what's yeah. going to happen next Monday night? Yeah. 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 Now Sometimes. you're going to panic because yeah. you know why? You're busy working till next Monday. That's, yeah. right. That's what you're telling me. So yep. nobody's looking after Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. That's right. And yep, that's so where we... you got to, you got to, you got to, you know, it's not the time that it, because to me, that's, that's the guy that's always going to be panicking for something. That's right. And, and you don't want that because if you're in a panic mode, you're not in a growth mode. You can't, yeah, you can't make those hard decisions. And it, if I, it feels like you're on the edge of the cliff, like, like almost always feel like you're about to fall over. And that's a very bad feeling, especially yeah. if you're in business for yourself and you're controlling, you know, the the money, the inflow of money. I mean, you you know, I like peace of mind at some point. You know, I don't want to feel like I'm always like I'm always on that ledge about to fail or worried about the next vehicle that's coming in or is somebody going to not show up or something. You got to position yourself that something else is well, working or someone else. If you if you can't do it, then, yeah. you know, out there looking. And that and that's the biggest thing is like you know this I think this COVID thing as mm -hmm. as bad as it is and everything I think it really woke up a lot of people to business Absolutely. in the sense that wow I I I I wasn't able to pay rent at the end of the month yes mm -hmm. I agree uh, you know I wasn't able to pay my cell phone bill I wasn't able to mm -hmm. you know pay my car payments I wasn't able to you know. And, and why you're going to blame it on COVID and you can't do that. No, you know, there's going to be other COVIDs in the Absolutely. future. Right? They might not be called COVID, but there's going to be <laughs> other circumstances that are going to come up sure. in the future that are going to affect us in different ways. And we've got to be able to, to be able to take those on and, and not have to worry about stuff like this. So let's always plan for stuff for the oops I yep. call like you know there's always going to be a noops let's yep. plan for it that's okay. right that's right and be able to shift a little one way or the other you don't have to redesign every day or every time something comes up it's not a oh let's change everything but it's a little just a shift and try to you know position yourself at a different angle or at a you know at a different mindset and sometimes it's just mindset sometimes you don't have to change anything just the way you think about it right and uh yeah. and, and we always yeah. kind of one thing that here yeah. at, at, at our business you know on a weekly basis is we have a staff meeting and we go over what what great happened last week and then what could we have done better so we're always trying to get uh, like self you know improve every week we, you know every week we want to be better than the week before and so we always have that getting better refining the process everything seems to be going in the in, in one direction right and absolutely zero quit mentality so if you have that mentality that oh man poor pitiful uh when COVID did first happen we had to shut you know we had to close our store and uh you know and i remember coming in that monday and saying you know we're we're closed but we're not closed Right. We're still in business, and and we're going to be in business. Let's focus and, online. Let's yeah, focus that's, doing that's something right. else. And that's exactly what we did. We literally, so my retail store started. We used our Facebook groups, and we started selling clothes through our Facebook group, and then delivering ourselves local, free local delivery out of my store. And and I and and honestly, Joel, my retail store grew during COVID when when we were supposed to be closed. Now we were closed. We we weren't open to the public, so we weren't causing issues, but we grew. You know. Well, it's like us. Like I, I don't know if you guys know. I, I think you do, Dustin. Mm -hmm. But we own a betting company. Yes, sir. So we own Clara Clark. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, sir. Uh, our betting company is our big company. Mm-hmm. A- and uh, what I mean by that is we have about 2,200 people across Canada uh, wow. that uh, represent our brand and uh, sell our brand. And during COVID, uh, you know, uh, we grew almost close to 58%, the bedding side of business. Wow. And we sell everything from bed sheets to comforters to pillows to mattress toppers to whatever, okay? You think yeah, bedding, think amazing. us. Yeah. And and what happened is we, during COVID, it was crazy because a lot of people were stuck at home. So they were painting, renovating. Yeah. And as soon as you paint your wall from blue to red, guess Maybe what? You, you need red sheets now. As yep. soon as you paint your wall from green to taupe, you want taupe sheets now. Yep. Uh, the other thing that helped us was the fact that people were not able to go into stores to buy sheets or bedding. Right. So they had to come online and, and, and buy from us. The other thing that happened is a lot of our, our, our business was driven uh, through fundraisers because now a lot of people needed a different way to find money for organizations, groups, teams. Mm -hmm. So they were doing fundraisers. So guess what they were doing? They were selling betting to do fundraisers. Wow. You know what I mean? That's cool. And, and, and and there was just, it it just, and then when, when they said, okay, now we got to shut down these stores. So people couldn't go into the only thing that was available was the food or your pharmacy, like essentials, uh, urgent products. Mm -hmm. So they would, they, bed sheets wasn't considered urgent right yeah. so that was locked off so nobody could go to a store and buy it so again right. we, we we went through the roof so we were selling anywhere from 30 to forty thousand sets of sheets a month That's for the last year and a half Unbelievable. yeah and, and you know it, it's something. insane the That's thing about it is, is people will call that luck sometimes, or they say, oh, you just happen to be in the right business at the right time. And that's absolutely not case, not the case, because if COVID would have caused a different response and they said no one can shop online, they can only come in stores, guess what? We would have slide shifted into that realm and said, okay, now our stores are going to be open and we're going to welcome everybody and, and we're going to have these open houses and we're going to bring everybody. Like, you do what you got to do because there's a lot more people that, that you're responsible for than just yourself. Yes. And that's what it takes. You just, you don't, it's not that, oh, poor, you know, something happens and, and it's just, I'm on the bad side of things. Did we lose? Oh. Um, sorry, it, we're having a heck of a rainstorm yeah, we, here. We, we, um, we call it the Alabama thunderstorm of the no, day. No, it's okay. I mean, it's all good. Okay, but yeah, so you know, and and that's why I said when people you know talk about you know luck, you know luck being a part of it, it's not. It's it's just seeing an opportunity, knowing that knowing what you got to do to make sure that you're uh, taking care of the ones that are responsible for you. In his case, it's twenty two hundred just in that one business. Well, that's you right. know? It, it, yeah, but you know what? And the other thing is, is I look after. Uh, I give my wife six days a month to help her with her business. Mm-hmm. Okay, the rest of the time I'm IGL 100%. But sure. I give my wife six days a month, and two of those are on a weekend. So, you know, sure. four days, like maybe a Thursday to a Tuesday, I, I work with my wife and I help her out. But what I do is I I got a truck and trailer, a 16 foot uh, trailer, big trailer. Yes, sir. And I look after Ontario and I deliver stuff That's for her. But what I do, is every stop I make, if I stop at Dustin's place and I notice that Dustin sold 400 items more than he did last month, Mm -hmm. I want Dustin's story because I've got another 18 stops to make today. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure those 18 people hear Dustin's story so that maybe next month they all sold 400 more items. That's That's right. That's right. Their success is your success. But I tell you what you just cost me. You just cost me six days of my month to help oh, my no. wife with her new business, you and know I don't watching. know how thankful I am for that. Uh, she just, uh, <laughs> she just. I don't know if you follow my Facebook. My wife, I'm really, really proud of her, and I want to give her a shout out here. She just, um, she's been doing training. Um, what's it called? Bar. Yeah, bar training. So, anyway, it's this um, exercise, this group, group fitness. Okay. Well, she just went through this whole new uh, training, got cert- certified to do pump, body pump. That's what it is. And so, um, so now she's going to other gyms and she's teaching these classes and, and, uh, you know, I'm helping her, uh, you know, what little bit along the way, but she, you know, super proud of her, but I can already hear the story now when I get home, uh, of what six days am I going to give her out of the month to help her build this business. So. And if you saw her recent post, she's got <laughs> some guns on her that I don't think anybody knew were, were up there. So yeah, uh, made me scared. But, but, yeah, the, exactly. but the thing is, and at the same time, you know what, Dustin? Yes, it sir. opens your mind, and yes, that sir. was the thing for me. I think those six days I learned so much because yeah. I take stuff out of her business that I can bring that over. Can and I think only the positive, right? 
leave the negative behind bring over the positive (laughs) And, yeah. and I bring it over, and I bring it over into my business and how I talk to my people, manage my people, yes, work sir. with my people. And, and again, you 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 said it earlier on. You got to give your people the freedom to develop and grow, Absolutely. so that you can then look at the next opportunity. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you know, and I think that's part of our business model here is empowering our employees. You know, uh, we have profit share here for um, Easy End. We're actually working for it on, on all the companies, but. Um, but you know, empowering them, letting them know everything that's going on. We don't hide anything here. Um, we have great meetings. It's an open door policy and we don't, you know, everybody knows if we have successful months, then, then everybody has successful. If, if it's a, if it's not so great month then you know, we yeah. all, we all, we take our wins together and we lose together. So, and we um, all start back Monday morning, yeah. you know, yeah. we leave the rest of it on the weekends and, and, you know, we'll, we'll leave it behind. That's right. Well, uh, that's Joel, awesome. Let's talk That's a little awesome. bit about product. Uh, I know you got the new. Uh, oh, so, yeah, yeah, I was going to ask you. All right, so we were talking about diversifying, you know, your income. We know IGL is a great ceramic company, but you guys have a big product line outside of your ceramic. Um, I was actually just checking out the Blizzard oh, uh, snow sh- uh, foam soap, right? Can you tell me a little bit more yeah. about that? So, it's, well, it's it's brand new. Uh, listen, it, it, IGL is, we're never the first to the dance. Sure. And uh, and part of the reason part of the reason that is is because uh, I guess the best way to explain IGL as a company is we're not a ceramic coating company we're not a detailing product company we are really an R and D company. Okay. First and foremost, that is what we are is an R and D company, mm-hmm. and uh, and that has a lot to do with our shareholders and partners and stuff Absolutely. like that. Sure. But anyway, so what we do is we work at developing products. And we we wanted to do a foam soap, but we wanted to do something that was going to be different, that was going to be good for ceramic coated vehicles, that wasn't mm-hmm. going to have many chemicals in it. Uh, it was going to be green, yeah, and and uh, that was going to be highly dilutable, highly dilutable. Nice. And uh, that was the biggest thing. So right now we we've got it at one to one fifty. I think wow. the ideal mixture is one to eighty, one to eighty-five, sure. Sure. and uh, everybody else's foam soap is is go pour it in. That's uh, it. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So we're a little yeah. different. So we're 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 dilutable. Yeah, and that means a lot to especially to a company like mine where we have you know do a lot of high volume and we have a lot of detailers around here and we try to get the most bang for our buck. I, you know, I think anybody in business wants to get the best bang for their buck, but when you can take a little bit of product and it goes a long way. It means a lot, and it sure helps the bottom line. Uh, you know, on a company like mine, when we can, when we, when we're not just dumping the product in. I know that a lot of the foam cannons. I mean, you just, they just mow down the product, and uh, it's great to see somebody they having do. a different approach to they it. Do. To um, you know, have a highly concentrated area. Is that you, Ryan? <laughs> no, that's not. Oh, <laughs> I thought that was. Yeah, I'm sorry. Anyways, that's right awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. I want to ask you, what about uh, Jennifer's uh, product, uh, Ko? Gen how, KO. How, yeah, how's yeah that doing? so Gen KO, that, yeah. that, uh, that's a product that she was working on for last couple of years. Uh-huh. And uh, she wanted to get something that was going to be good for water spot removing. Uh, because, you know, we only really have Delete, but it's a professional only product. Yeah, it's right. not available to the consumer. Sure. So we wanted something that was going to be consumer safe, but also that could wash and could leave a bit of a shine and a little bit of hydrophobicity. Right. So she started playing with stuff, and then I said, hang on, hang on. I don't know if you should be mixing stuff because I don't know if it's going to cause <laughs> sure. a reaction or hurt a vehicle. Or That's So anyway, right. she started uh, you know, playing with stuff and then started telling me about it, and I said, well, why don't we see what it, if, it, if we can modify it or if we can tune it right. or whatever. Right. So we reached out to the R&D team, and, uh, and they came up with something, and I said, well, you know what? It, it, it was her baby, baby her yep. idea, yep. just like glue off is Bernice's idea. Right, love uh, it. Love so it. I love said yeah. they they deserve the credit. They get it, you know. They get it. They deserve the credit, and and you know, and let's let's reward them for it also. So that's, that's, that's awesome. what we did. And yeah. uh, Jennifer's got a great following, and it, it worked out well. A lot of the people bought it at first obviously to support her Mm -hmm. but then realize holy shit this is not a joke this is a real product it does real things yeah yeah Yeah, that's awesome man we love jennifer Uh, so it's pretty cool yeah she she came out and i and i always try to tell this story because 
you know, these things stick with me, and I hope they stick with other people. But um, she came out here on site and uh, demoed um, IGL Ceramic. This was years ago. But one of the best, and it's so cool, so informative. She was just absolutely awesome. Um, but one of the things she showed us, and this was on our Hacker Hack a couple weeks ago, right. and I try to tell everybody because it's such a coolest trick and it works so good, is um, when you're laying down ceramic and you end up with, you know, looking for high spots and just say it's an overcast day or you don't have great lighting, but the white poster board trick, and I give her credit every time because I, we use yeah. this every day at my shop now. We're doing black boats or dark cars, and we walk around with white poster boards, and everybody that comes to my shop while we're doing it, they're like, what are they doing? I said, man, this is the coolest trick ever, but it's a, it yeah. identifies high spots. And yeah. she taught us that, and I tell yeah. you, man, that thing stuck with me, and, I, and I'm forever grateful for Jennifer for teaching us that trick because – Outside yeah. of that, man, we would wait, you know. And you go to the dollar store and you buy your poster board. <laughs> right, 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 you know, and uh, in, instead of, like, taking out the expense. sun and having to check it and also, uh, always cool, you know. Joel, yeah. I always, um, you know, I always like to ask this question to the folks we have on the podcast. And, um, you know, uh, right now you see a lot of detailers are, are coming into that kind of hump uh, where they start to slow down a bit, you know, if winter's kind of creeping up on us. Yeah. And, um you know, we're trying to put a lot of people on software, and so with us being Detail Bookie, what impact do you see software playing on the um, detailing industry? I, I think it's very important. I think it's more important than people realize because, again, organization uh, is a key factor because if you're spending less time trying to organize yourself, trying to, you know, looking for your agenda, what did I write, where, when, the uh, it, you know, the more organized you are, the more time you have to focus on the more important things. Yep. Uh, I think also that the good thing about uh, a software like Detail Bookies is you can pre-schedule stuff to do things for you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can already look at, you know, sending out reminders to your customers, uh, you know, your six months coming up. You know, because you're not always going to think about doing that and you're not yeah. always going to have somebody sitting at a desk paying them to just call sounds like we we might have lost audio jessica yeah. hang on one one second, second joe we, we lost audio i'm not sure if it got muted hang on one second we're looking anyway but i'll speak to what he was speaking to real quick joe wait we can't hear you so i, I do want to mention hang on she's bringing you back on try us now can you can yeah you we got me? you we got you now but, okay, yeah. I don't know what you got, what you didn't get, but I was just saying how important it is to pre-plan using the software programs, you know, I, that are available. Yeah, it, you know, it really is. And I think it adds, you know, one thing that I know that it did for my business, and I didn't get into the software business, like, um, with a plan. It, it kind of happened because I built a software that for my company specifically. And it worked so great at taking us to another professional level. So, if you know, if your dentist or your um, doctor can send you a notification or a reminder or, or you know, follow up, why can't your detail shop do the same thing? And I wanted that professional approach to things. I wanted everything in my, you know, I, I could deliver a professional detail, but it was really hard for me to deliver the professional uh, you know, management and, and running my business. And I think that the software really helped bridge that gap from great detailing to great business because it was doing the, the reminders. It was doing the, well, go ahead. Yeah. Well, you nailed it because, you know, I, I look at you guys and I look at me, you know, I got this, I got yes, this, you got your, sh okay. <laughs> and, and when you're sending that out through detail bookies, yes, it's, sir. it's again, it's about branding. Yes, sir. Uh, and and I think that one of the biggest mistakes, and, and I swear to God, okay, I'm going to tell you this, and my staff know it, and, and uh, I freak out all the time, but yes, I've got sir. one pet peeve in life, yes, and sir. that's if I call your phone and I get, you've contacted one two yeah. five zero Ooh. zero 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 yeah. zero zero. I'm going to fucking hang up. Right. I'm going <laughs> to hang up. You're out. I'm deleting yeah. your name out of my book. Yeah. You're no longer, I'm never going to call you ever, ever again in my life. Yeah. Yeah. Because... A, a business without a sign is a sign of no business. Okay, That's right. Love and it's it. the same Great. thing Love with it. the goddamn voicemail and branding. <laughs> branding is so important, and anybody can do it so cheaply today. They can. So don't give me the excuse that well, I got no money to buy bullshit. You got a shirt on. Yeah. Only difference is it says Haley Henson instead of Tom's detailing. Okay, exactly. So right. get exactly. off your high horse. Okay, and this is important. I, I want if anybody picks anything up from me today in mm -hmm. this podcast, 
is start branding yourselves. Start Absolutely. branding your business. Not my business. I've yeah. had shops call me say, can I be IGL coding of Alabama or of <laughs> Toronto or of yeah. uh, San Diego? Uh -huh. No, no, you can't. You're not allowed. I don't he want must you to. have got our call. Well, yeah. why not? <laughs> Ceramic Pro or these guys do it. Sure. You know why? Because that's, that's not right. It's because not. I may die tomorrow, something might happen, the company may go sideways, sure. but Tom's detailing is not going anywhere. Right. You're Tom. You're you know, only going to go when you go. So build yourself, build your business. Don't build the brands that you support. Do, am I okay with somebody saying, can I put IGL on my door? My sure, Absolutely. Sure. It's yeah. like going to a garage. They're going to advertise Michelin. Toyo, yeah. Yeah, look I, at the back. You've got Merca, Rupes. Yeah, you know, these right. are things you use. That's fine. You're using IGL. You can use my my logos. I give That's them to right. you. You can do whatever you want. But please, please do not ever call your business IGL coatings of uh, San Diego. you got to concentrate on Dustin's detailing right. or whatever name Dustin picks. That's his brand. That's who he's got to build because that's what you're going to sell in the future. Imagine if you built Ceramic Pro. Of, sorry, I'm going to use the name. Sorry, yeah. I, I apologize for that. But if you were going to use that name of San Diego or whatever, you built a really, really successful business, mm -hmm. and then it comes time to sell it. Yeah, there's no How do you value. sell somebody else's brand? No, yeah, that's right. That's right. And you, know, you can't do that, guys. So please, please, if any detailers watching and listening, start thinking business. Start thinking about what can I do to add more value to my company or to that, me man. as an individual. I love that. You know, when I first started, and, and dude, that hits so home with me because when I first started doing ceramic coating years ago, the popular thing, and I'm going to mention their name, Ceramic Pro, was, was brand every bit of your business backed on these other companies. And I just completely went against the grain on that. I said, you know, we don't sell, we're not building their brand. We're building our brand. And EZN has to, you know, is responsible for everything that leaves here, not Ceramic Pro or IGL or right. System X or whoever. It's, it's on me. So why in the world am I going to put their logos on my work? You know, just I don't put my car wash soap uh, up. You know what I mean? And, <laughs> you know, uh, and then our banners in the back of, no. of our shop, you know, the big ones are easy in and detail bookie. You right. know, we just we try to represent a little bit. But but we're sure not going to, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't expect uh, you to be wearing an easy in shirt right <laughs> here. So, you know. Uh, no, but you know what? If you were a customer of ours, and, and again, I know that that has nothing to do with it, but it, yeah. it doesn't matter. This here shirt is actually a customer's shirt on the back. I think it's somewhere in Pennsylvania. Sure. Yeah. But it, and you know what? I'm supporting that because he supports me, right? Absolutely. No big deal. It's Absolutely. all good. But but at the end of the day, it's it's not a... I'm going to become more successful if my customers become more successful because right. they're going to need more product, buy more product. And, yep. and that's how I'm going to win. So my number one job is to make sure that you're winning. Absolutely. You know, we I think said this earlier, man needs a hat. Your success is our success. And I, and I think that's awesome. I heard a, a thing the other day was talking about, you know, um, everybody's worried about, you know, the look of it. And I heard, you know, like, uh, you know, buying the, the Maserati car and you're supporting that family or, or Wells Fargo. You're going to get a loan from Wells Fargo to go buy the car with their name. And you're not supporting yourself. You're supporting their families with your, their, you know, with your purchases. Support yourself. Build yourself up. And there's the value in that. Don't stop worrying about everybody else and keeping up with the Joneses. Take care of you, and then everything else will build around you. You start to build from within, and that's and, and that's what easy. I mean, you know, listen, it was and it was an unpopular belief years ago that that detail shops shouldn't. I mean, shouldn't literally brand themselves around the coatings that they're using. And what it was was they were doing such a they were spending so much money on marketing. Detailers are trying to get a ride on the coattail by using that and and just completely when it gets the grain myself go ahead well and the other problem is is I, and again i know that a lot of the companies they actually make money for that too because they charge you for a lot of that stuff yeah, yeah. so <laughs> not only are you building not only are you building your business using their name their yeah, brand but they're charging you for, for the sign they're charging you for things that's crazy. you know what i mean it's like yeah. what the hell just happened here <laughs> like you know i i don't get it no, I really not, don't get it. You but, know, that's that's funny. Well, 
I'm glad to hear it from someone else's perspective, and it's so crazy hearing it from a from us, you know, a coding company. But and it, but it's true, and you know what? It's the it, it's 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 accurate, and that's you should be focusing on yourself. And well, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, because Dustin, when your customer comes into your shop, he's coming into your shop to buy a coding. He's already yeah. got that in his set in the mind, unless you're upselling him. But if right. not, he's coming in to buy a coating. Sure. He's coming to Dustin's shop. He's already made that decision that I'm going to I'm going to Dustin's shop. That's right. So he doesn't care what you're using. No. He believes in Dustin. Yeah. He believes in what Dustin's that's shop's right. going to do. Dustin only needs to use the right product that's going to work for his business that's right. and, and whatever else. You know what I mean? The, the, the lying to people needs to stop. Yeah, you know, right. as far as the this claims, is a ten year a lifetime, claims. yeah, and and yeah. this is coming from companies that have been around seven months, right? The fuck right. do how, they know how, about ten years or how a lifetime? Do they know? That's exactly right. That okay, is, so yeah. IGL started in two thousand and seven. Mm. We didn't sell our first product till two thousand and fourteen. Wow, wow. That's and our, and our number one coding was only a four year coding at the time. Sure. So this is why I say, here's another example. IGL, we were the last one to the marine coding game. Mm -hmm. And that frustrated me because as a distributor, I'm seeing everybody else yeah. selling products in the marine industry. <laughs> and I'm like, shit, I want product. I want product. How come I can't have product? Sure. Everybody else is selling product. Yeah. Joel, we have a marine product. We've been testing it for two and a half years. Mm -hmm. It's almost to where we need it to be. We got to just make sure it meets our requirements and then we'll let it go. Sure. So and again, so the product was being tested for almost four years. It's wow. a two-year coding, yeah. But they know it's going to do what it's going to do for two years. It goes back to under promise, over deliver, right? That's right. That's right. And, and this is all about business. And when people, my, one of my biggest things is when, and again, I shouldn't say that because I just said about the voicemail. But anyway, I'm going to say another one. <laughs> but is when somebody goes to Dustin's shop and he goes and gets a coding. And then the next week, I get a phone call. Joel yeah. Palm, president of IGL. I'll get a phone call from a customer. Mr. Lapalm, I uh, I was in uh, Texas. I went to shop ABC. I had my car coded with Kenzo. And what do I need to do to maintain the car? What? I'm sitting what? there saying, what? <laughs> Why are you asking me? Did the, did the detailer not show you how to clean oh, the car? Sure. Did he not sell you the product you're going to need to clean yeah. the car? Did he not tell you he wants to see you every six months? Yeah. Well, no, he took my 1200 bucks or 1500 bucks or 2000 sure. bucks, And on my, you wouldn't believe how many and, shops are leaving money on the table, on the table and not doing the proper thing to educate the customers. Sure. Again, they need, to, this is why detail bookies is so important because yeah. they need to sit down with the guy when he comes and picks up his car, go over everything, put it in the system what they went over with him. Yeah, that's right. Schedule the next appointment right away. And before the guy even gets to his car, he's, he's received his first email from detail bookies yep. saying, hey, your appointment is this day. Please put it in your calendar. That's, that's it. Right? And that's exactly the workflow that we have here. And it's so funny. I was literally fixing to say when you were speaking to, you know, advertising these coding companies as your business. I said, if, if, if I have a problem at Easy In, I'm not sending my customer to Joel Palm to answer the question. I got an answer to it. Like, they're coming to me. I'm dealing with it, and and you never hear about it. That's how my company. It's my service. Yeah. It's my you know. It's me putting whatever product I chose to use was my decision. So I have to stand behind that. And I was literally about to say you're not going to do that. And here he is getting phone calls about how to maintain. That's unbelievable to me that someone's customer that they're not that they're not given that you know that that training and that you know that information to the customer because all it is is just it's just continuing business. <laughs> yeah. We we have a, we have a thing with IGL. If you order five hundred dollars or more, it's free shipping. Five hundred dollars sure. or less, it's you pay the shipping. Yeah. So again, we talk about managing your business. I at the beginning stages, like you know, four years ago, we'd get orders. It was four hundred and eighty eight dollars oh, or four hundred and ninety four dollars. Yeah. And and you know, at the beginning, I I would call everybody or my Jeff, my partner. We would call everybody sure. and say, hey. You know, you're going to spend, you, you spend $498, you spend $2 more, you get free shipping. If not, I'm going to charge you 50. Oh, no ship. And I'm oh, thinking, why wouldn't you buy a $5 product? You'd save 10 on. bucks. Yeah. Like, it, it, and and you see so much of that, or, or, or you'll see a detailer uh, order a product today and, and say, can you overnight that? I need it tomorrow. Uh. And then you give them the price. It's like, 
$130 to overnight it. The product was 15 bucks. He's going to pay 130 to overnight it. Oh and I'm thinking, man, oh man, this is this. These are the people that I really want to help yes. because obviously for them to do something like that, they're not managing their money no. properly. No, they're not they're managing not. their inventories properly. And I bet you if I went to their shops, they probably have 18 different brands sitting there. Oh, you know it. And I, I, I had a guy call me last week. He wanted to buy IGL and I had a long talk with him on the phone. And, you know, sometimes they call me, not always the reps, True. but they, the guy was looking for a new account and I was talking to him and, and I said, what do you use? And he started naming four, three, four, five companies. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa stop, stop, stop. He said, well, what's wrong? I said, well, you, you don't, you don't need IGL. Right. He says, well, what do you mean? I, I really want to use your product. I said, well, no, you've got too many products now. Mm -hmm. You're not doing any one of those products justice or giving any one of those brands an opportunity right. to, to do with something within your business. I said, I don't want to just be another skew on your shelf. Yeah. You know, that, that doesn't help me at all, and it doesn't help you at all. That's right. So, you know, and, 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 and so people say, well, you're crazy. You turn down business. You know what? It's not that I turned down business. It's that when that gentleman realizes what I was saying and figures out how to manage his business properly, yeah, he might come back, back and say, hey, listen, I've got one lower end and now I want IGL as my upper end. Absolutely. Would you be interested? Yeah. Now I'll sit down and I'll talk to him. Right. That's right. That's right. You know, because you, 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 you go to a shop and when you look up and you see, uh, you know, System X, Ceramic Pro, G Tech D, Car Pro, uh, IGL, SPS. It's like, as a customer, I'm worried to leave my car here because I'm thinking this goddamn detailer is as confused as anybody else. What is he going to do to my car? He doesn't yeah, even fucking know what he wants. To he do. don't even. Know. <laughs> yeah, you know. And how can you, you know, like so with us, um, you know, we we got we we got a process, we got a product that we use, and we know what it, we know what it's going to do. You know, we, we know exactly what to expect every single time. And that's what, you know, we I took the decision out of it for my detailers. They know what we're going to use on every single thing, every single time, and we know what to expect from it. If you start to mix and grab and you don't know every time you're doing something different, there's no way to determine what's working, what's not working for you, what's easier, what's harder. It's just too, it's too, many, too many variables. So if you eliminate the variables and, you, and, and then if you have an issue, it's real easy to go back and go, okay, here was the problem. Instead, if you pick and choose you know, off the shelf, whatever you're going to use this time or that time, you have no clue what the problem might be. Right. You have no way to build consistency in your work. And uh, so, you know, that's... That's just the way we do it here. So, Joel, totally agree. We're yes, getting the we're getting the cue. It's uh, we, we got to wrap it up. I know yeah. Dustin doesn't get to talk to somebody that actually. Uh, I mean, you guys have great. the exact same mentality yeah. on, on the way you guys handle business. It, <laughs> it seems like no. either you read his book. No, he had to read your. No, book. I was definitely and reading Joel's. Definitely read I promise book. you that. No, I, I look up to uh, Mr. Joel uh, so much. I mean, you, you've uh, you don't know it, but you're a mentor at large, and uh, I appreciate everything that you've done. Thank and, you. And conversations that me and you've had. And the respect that I have for you is tremendous. Um, I think you're a huge asset to anybody that comes in contact with you, uh, including myself. I'm very appreciative of your time. And uh, But we got to go. Um, we're going to finish you. up our show. And I really appreciate it, Joel. Um, uh, we'll see you soon. Yeah. Uh, definitely in Vegas, I believe. Uh, if, if you'll be there, we'll for be there. For sure. And say hi to your dad for me, please. Yes, sir. Will do, Joel. Thank you, buddy. Good seeing you. Have a good one, man. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. All right. So. Now, man, what an awesome, what an awesome conversation! I absolutely Joel, I love Joel Lapom. He is just fantastic. Oh man, it's awesome, and I don't think you're trying to stretch this a little longer than we normally go no. to stay out of the heat. Ah, just a little bit, just <laughs> hey, a little man, bit. But it's that time. So, uh, it is that time. All right, we got hacker hack. hack. <laughs> I, love, I love that man. That is so awesome. It was hack. <laughs> Or, or hack. hack. Okay, what do we got lined up for us today? I'm right, flipping man. this over like so, there's something Yeah, there's definitely nothing on the back. So today <laughs> what we're going to be talking about, Dustin, it's a little trick that you guys have actually talked about on the podcast once before. Okay. But it never made it to the actual hack or hack. So we're going to be talking about an actual hack today. Okay. All right. And that has to do with ceramic in the heat. Ah, okay, you got to be talking about putting the ceramic in a bowl of ice, not the ceramic liquid, but the can, the <laughs> right. bottle. You yeah. don't want to dump your ceramic on ice but 
what you want to do, if it's hot and it's super hot and it's super humid and you have a very fast flash time on the product that you're using, um, we use System X here, um, but so sometimes it can be a very fast flash. So we cool our ceramic down. We take and put it in a bowl with ice in it and put the bottle down in there and we cool our ceramic down. And that slows the, that slows the flash time down to where it's workable in smaller areas and so you don't end up with high spots or just you know an absolute nightmare of a job right um because we've all been there i don't care what ceramic you're using um the flash times change with temperature and humidity right and it doesn't matter so like igl you can work like half a car down you can put you can you can put half of a car on before you have to you know take it off before right. you have to level it okay yeah okay but that that half a car changes with the temperature and the humidity, sure. so they still have the same problems. It's just a different, you know, it's a different um, approach there. But if you cool the ceramic down, it will help you in those hot and humid days that we're down here in South Alabama, and we are getting toasted with them right now. If so, you're mobile detailers <coughs> south of the yeah. Mason Dixon, yeah, you man, get your bowl of ice, carry your bowl of ice around, and stick the ceramic just off keep in there. Cooler, right? Don't pour the ceramic in the bowl of ice. You're gonna be calling me pissed off because you just wasted four hundred dollars worth of ceramic. <laughs> Put the can in. The <laughs> don't pour the ceramic in the bowl. Yes, please don't. Uh, That's an awesome show, man. Listen, we're going to wrap it up right here. Who do we have on next week? Do you know, Ryan? Yes, I do. We've got that? a guy who is usually on the other side of the microphone. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's the yeah. great Marty Hill. Um, With pints and polish. Pints and polish. What an awesome guy to have on our show. I'm looking forward to drilling him down like uh, he did us. Yeah, uh, right. It's going to be a blast. No, he's such a cool guy. I know he runs the uh, the um, pints and polish. And they, what is it? The, the group, community pub. The community pub on Wednesdays. Cheers. Awesome. Yeah, man. We've been on that one a few times. And uh, he's just a great guy, great asset for the community. Looking forward to talking to him. Um, I want to say it again. Joe LaPalma is absolutely yeah, awesome. Man, we love amazing. him to death. Appreciate it. Uh, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. Thank you. That was, I know, I knew it. I, I thought so, and I was like thinking this is what Joe Rogan I thought it was. Too. I love it. <laughs>